Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome to today's video 51 on my yarn adventures while on holiday in Europe and the UK. I'm a little bit late getting it out. Um, I've been home about a week, but you'll notice I'm a bit snuffly and croaky, so you'll have to forgive me for that. I was great when I got to Heathrow, got on the plane, I got to Hong Kong, my throat was a bit scratchy, I had a headache, and then Hong Kong to Cairns, I broke out in full flu, and I've been pretty yucky this week. So whatever I picked up, the flu injection didn't come back. So anyway... For those of you who've been following me for a while, you would have seen my video 50 on what I purchased in yarn and the fun I had looking for it in London, uh, where I first arrived and saw my son for a couple of days. Um, if you're new to the channel, go back, check out video 50. You might find something there you enjoy. And if you live in the UK, Loop is worth visiting, the shop I visited for yarn. Anyway. After London, I set off for Bruges in Belgium, um, a beautiful canal city. After visiting Venice, I think Bruges is a much cleaner, nicer city. And what's not to like about Belgium? Belgium chocolate, Belgium waffles, Belgium beer. It's a great place and I really enjoyed it. Now, I did find a small yarn shop and sewing. She had a bit of everything and it was lovely and I was looking at the yarn and I picked out a couple of purchases and I asked the lady if I could take some video and photos of her shop for my small channel. No, 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 because I don't have more than a thousand subscribers. Yes, that was her response. My channel was too small and I was not to take any photos or video, which sort of made me realise I'm never really worried about subscriber count, but maybe I should and get it up to a thousand. Anyway, I still bought a couple of things, even though I had my nose out of joint. I bought, and I haven't checked it out because I have been ill, it's called DMC Rele Relevation Glitter, a wonderful colour yarn. Now, I bought this because I thought it might be like Mandela Sparkle, which I've been dying to try. Um, and I can't get here unless I order it through me mothers and that's if they will. Now I can't tell you the color. It just has shade 505. Um, it's a DK light three weight. Da -da -da -da. Where is it made? Da -da -da -da. Um, it says it's 78% acrylic, 19% wool. 3% polyester and that was something I found overseas doesn't tell you where it's made but I quite like those colors and it's got a bit of speckle it wasn't cheap it was like nine euro haven't done any conversions I bought that from her shop I probably would have bought more if she hadn't been so rude anyway that was there excuse me <coughs> I knew if I started talking, I'd start coughing up. Sorry about that. The little shop next door to her, and I saw them hanging out the front, and this started my European bag collection for project bags that I make give away as gifts. I found this one in orange, Bruges. I thought that was quite cute. So, yes. I started buying some bags I thought would be good for project bags and maybe for gifts or giveaways. So that was Bruges. It was beautiful. I really loved it and would like to go back and see more of Belgium. Probably Brussels would be nice. Um, so after Bruges, I um, then went to Copenhagen. Now, I've been to Copenhagen before. Um, the most disappointing monument is the Little Mermaid. Once you see it, you go, why did I bother? But anyway, I have been there before and I did a walking tour. It was very, very wet that day. I wasn't keen on shopping. And um, I did re uh, email Hobie before I left to find out if they had a shop front. Unfortunately, you can only buy online from Hobie. Um, I did get a great response saying that two to three years they're looking at having a shop in Copenhagen to sell their yarn, which would have been nice. But anyway, I didn't buy any yarn in Copenhagen. After that, I went to Stockholm. I've been there before 
and I went to the ABBA Museum. Now, I'm not a big fan of ABBA. I don't mind them, but my husband is. And that wasn't as disappointing as I thought. It was actually really quite good. It was really interesting. And they do have a small gift shop. And I bought more bags. I thought we'd make great project bags. So there's ABBA in a black. And Chiquita, their song from the ABBA Museum. So I bought two bags there for yarn project bags and possibly gifts for people or giveaways. Um, Stockholm was nice. I, I like Stockholm. I like, I like all of Scandinavia. It's a great place to visit. The thing about Bruges too, I found out from the tour I did, um, they have to learn four languages at school. The first one by the time they're age six, the second one by the time they're age 12. And they do speak English, so I did not misunderstand the lady that said, no video, not enough, not enough followers. Anyway, after, I'm sorry, I have to refer to my notes. After Stockholm was supposed to be the highlight of my trip, Tallinn in Estonia and the handmade knitting market. Well, I think the advertising and the hype over it really is um, creative. It was a little wet the day I went. Um, there were about 10 stalls in the knitting market. Handmade means handmade on a knitting machine. I did not find any handmade knitted products except one, which I purchased, which is like a lightweight wraparound cardigan. I would show you, but it needed hand washing. And although my family were really great and did all the washing, they were not allowed to do my hand washing. And it's drying flat at the moment, but I'll show you another time. But yeah, I was so excited about going to this knitting market. And I was. A little disappointed but hey I still enjoyed Tallinn it was a beautiful place to visit and in Tallinn in one shop they do tapestry bags and different bags I found another project bag with cows on it I thought this is quite cute drawstring so that might end up being a gift or a giveaway for someone that was in one shop and then in the back of a um, like a, a knitwear shop, not part of the market, I had a basket of wool. Everything is in wool. I made new friends on this trip. Leanne, who knits, she was knitting a blanket for an auntie she was going to be visiting in Scotland in Karen Cakes. And we would have knitting natters every morning. Um, there'd be four of us. There'd be me, Leanne, and two ladies from Canada whose names escape me, but we would get together from 9.15 to 10.15 and knit, crochet and just talk. So in Talon, I found wool in orange. Now, it is wool and it's very coarse wool. It's 100% pure new wool. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the names. And if there's anything in English, and yes, made in Talon, that are and I bought two because orange I like there wasn't a great range there was just one basket of wool and I did walk the streets of town quite a bit looking for yarn so um that'll probably end up in a tea cozy or something so because I don't think that would be nice next to the skin it's a bit itchy but it was about six euro a ball or skein or hang it's sort of funny. They're like Hanks doubled over. So that was Talon. And yes, disappointed in the knitting market. But hey, that's the way it goes. You find other things. I did find a polar bear ceramic in an antique shop in a glass cupboard that would have weighed about three kilos. Um, when I asked the lady who was it made by, she just said, oh, it's Russian polar bear. And it was 480 euro I didn't buy it because it wasn't like she was saying it was Royal Copenhagen or Ladro for that sort of money and to be quite honest four kilos or three to four kilos pretty heavy to bring back and I didn't want to pay for shipping at home so I didn't buy that polar bear but and I didn't get them out 
I'll show you next time. I did find a little tiny ceramic polar bear at a flea market in Bruges, which was quite cute. And I'll show you that one next time. So after Tallinn, I was off to Russia, St. Petersburg. Um, so interesting. The people are lovely and friendly. Very, very friendly, lovely people. Um, spent two days doing um, guided tours and lunching on Russian food and drinking vodka and champagne. No yarn shopping. The thing I think you realise by the end of day one, you're only allowed to see what they want you to see. It's quite a large area, but you're restricted to that, and most tourists are. Um, went to the Hermitage Museum, which is truly amazing. Five buildings. Our tour guide said, if you stood in front of every display for one minute, it would take you 11 years to see it all. Um, went to the Peterhof Castle, went for a cruise on the canal, 7.30 in the morning, freezing, wrapped in blankets, drinking champagne. It was great two days, but no yarn shopping. Probably needed a break. Then I went to one of my favourite cities I've been to before, Helsinki. Um, I had a ball, absolute ball. I went out to what is called Winterworld, got all rugged up and went in there to the vodka ice bar had the most amazing vodka at the ice bar out of ice shot glasses went on a dog sled ride which was i've been on one before in the open up in um Longyearbyen, which is part of norway way up in the arctic but this was indoors and like you're on an angle flying and these dogs are so powerful and yeah, it was great fun. I did tobogganing and bobsledding, stuff I would never ever have attempted in my youth, too scared, and stuff I can't do in the tropics. I loved it. I then went to the Rock Church, which is a church built into rock, and had a look around there and met up with Leanne and her husband, Jeff, and we did the touristy thing um, because I'd been before, I was telling him about this, that, and the other. And at the end of the day, I put my hand out and Leanne said, what's up? I said, my tip. Her tip was to use Martha Gardner's wool wash. That's not what I meant. Anyway, we had a ball and we did fine yarn. Of all places, the big metro bus station. There was this shop full of all different crafts. She's into scrapbooking. She bought some amazing scrapbooking stuff. I'm not really into it, but I can appreciate what she bought. And there was some yarn. Not a lot, but some yarn. Excuse me, I'll get it. So, first of all, I quite like this glittery yarn. And it's really soft. And then I got back later and realised it's actually karatopu made in Turkey. Um, it's just the labels in um, Finnish or Flemish or Finnish. So there you have, I bought an orange and a pink in Helsinki. But I did find some yarn made in Finland. It's 100% wool. Now I tend to buy all three weights because it's suitable for here. And I didn't see a lot of heavier, chunky yarn. But this is called Moomin Novita, made in Finland, and it's 100% wool. I bought two in that colour and one in that. And they were at a big craft store down in the bus station. How's that for you? So yes, I have bought some yarn, and there is more to come. Um, I then went to Gdansk in Poland. Um, I loved it. I think one of my favourite new places. Um, it's amazing that they're still rebuilding after World War II. And when you see the black and white photos of how much damage was done by the war, it truly amazes me that they're restoring churches and still getting on with it. Um, it's very cheap in Poland too. And amber um, is one of the big things they promote and sell. All I really bought was a little Christmas decoration with amber in it. 
no yarn chopping. I got in through all the, all the history of Gdansk after the war and during the war and yeah, a break from yarn shopping. Um, then I went back to England. That was my European adventure and I went back to England to have a week catching up with my son and looking around. And we had a hire car and went down to Southampton because it's not just a place ship leaves from. It is actually huge and there's lots to look at. And I had been looking earlier in London for Poundland, a big one, and there was a big one in Southampton. Um, Natalie made my mum talks about them all the time. I think it might be Sunburst Crochet talks about them. And I went into Poundland and I found yarn. I'll get it. I found this orange flecky yarn and it was two for one. So I bought six to make a blanket maybe. I don't know. But I really like this colour and it was like two pound a ball, which is cheap. It's acrylic, 100% acrylic. And it's a three weight, which is an eight ply. But yeah, I bought six balls of that from Poundland. That was the only colour I really liked. And by then I was starting to worry about how was I getting all this home in excess luggage. I did find another bag, a project bag in Southampton. Harry Potter. I'm not a Harry Potter fan. I've never read a book or seen a movie. But there are people out there, and one of my boss's wives is a mad Harry Potter fan. But I think this might be for a giveaway or a gift as a project bag or just a bag to have for Yarny friends. So that was Southampton. Now, I have got stuff that I have buried. Excuse me. again sorry about that after Southampton we headed south and went to Land's End right to the end of England it was wet it was cold and I didn't really want to go that far but we did and it was interesting and on the way back we stayed at Wade Bridge which is about five miles from Port Isaac for those who are big fans of the UK show Doc Martin Port Isaac is where Doc Martin is filmed and we stayed in Wade Bridge and uh, at a B&B. &B. Probably I don't do B&Bs, bed and breakfast, very often. I'm not very comfortable in them. But this one was amazing. And we were a little early for us, so um, and she wasn't quite ready. So we went off to Port Isaac and had a look at where Doc Martin was filmed. And then we had a walk around Wade Bridge. I had Googled and there was this shop that was really difficult to find called Sandra, Andra, Sandra Anderson's Dressmaker but said she had yard. I finally found it. The lady was a lovely and she had a great yarn display. She was busy when I was there because lots of people were coming in for alterations on ball gowns so there must be some event happening there but she said I could take video and photo and I did buy some stuff because she had some stuff that was novelty stuff I hadn't seen on my travels. So first of all, I did buy some Stylecraft Special for Babies Aran in this colour. This is one of my favourite colours. It's beautiful and soft. And what it attracted me was what she had in the window. So I have been watching videos and catching up. And I started with Lama Ma Michaela because I was really pleased to see her well and back again. And Debbie from the Canadian Crotchet Art, because I really enjoy seeing the patterns she does. And to be honest, I have made one of the ear warmer patterns that she talks about. I'll show you next time. And Madonna Ballard, because when I was crook, I needed a laugh. And I can guarantee if I watch Madonna Ballard and her channel, I have a laugh. So I bought this because I thought this would just really blow Madonna away because we have this issue. 
she's going to be doing a 24 hour live when she reaches a thousand so I won't be coming if I can't take my knitting I'm not coming Madonna this is a great bag this is for me it clips at the top it's sturdy I bought that from Sandra's shop <coughs> But don't be disappointed, Madonna, because the smaller version is hooked on crochet. And I bought that one too. Sorry, I've got to have another drink. This rate's giving out. So not only did I buy those, she had individual coasters for sale. I bought this one, hooked on crochet. Sorry if it's flaring. Knit and Natter, which is what we used to do each morning when we could catch up. And the Happy Hooker. I'll probably keep one of these. I think one will go to a friend. And I don't know about the other one. I may give it away. But yeah, the lady was lovely. Didn't mind what I filmed. I tried not to get the people in it that she was doing alterations on their dresses. So, but yeah. So at the end of this video, there'll be a few little videos of yarn shopping or areas I've been to that might be of interest, and I hope you enjoyed them. So you're probably thinking, how on earth did she get this home? All this yarn home. Well, I'm fortunate that I can bring back 35 kilos of luggage, actually 40 kilos, but I don't. And I only went over with 26. Excuse me a minute. I'll show you what I found. Ta -da! You've all seen the small version where you put the yarn in, suck the air out, and it flattens. Well, I had these, and I borrowed the ho hotel's vacuum cleaner. And I went, doom, doom. My husband thought it was fun. And, yes, I did come in well under um, 32 kilos, but... That's how I brought it all home, all the yarn, in two of those in my suitcase. Um, my husband was in Spain. He did keep going to a yarn shop, even though it said it would be open. I think he went four times and it was closed every time. It's probably their summer holidays. But he went to the Salvador Dali Museum and he said the only thing you could think of, he bought me some of Salvador. Dali's artwork on a case he said oh you could use it for crochet hooks which I thought was nice of him to get that for me so that's another addition to my yarny things and for the flight home I saw this in the news agency and thought oh, this would be good I never buy magazines for crochet or knitting um, mainly because I find they're just full of too much ads and stuff and not enough content. This is no different, but it came with a little witch kit. And I thought that might be quite cute to make. Um, so, yeah, I needed something on the plane. But as it was, I got too sick and I didn't read much of it. Um, look, I've been through it. I know other people go through it and show patterns. But there's nothing that inspires me. You know, the squares and there's no outstanding tops, I think. I have watched Nona, um, Rosie at Nona's Stitching Lounge. She makes great tops that inspire me. And to be honest, the tops in here, well, I think she does better. So they were my yarny things from my European and UK adventure. It was a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, met some lovely people, made some new friends. So then I get home. And I've got Happy Mail. So this one I'll share with you. This big box from Amazon. Now I racked my brain because I thought I'm not sure I bought anything from Amazon. This big box has two balls of Super Saver Ombre in the colour, 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 Scuba. Awesome colour, one of my favourite colours. Now I have Amazon UK, Amazon Australia, Amazon USA. No, I haven't bought anything from either of those for six months. So some kind person has sent me this from the USA 
and there's no note to say who sent it. So it's my mystery, gorgeous, happy mail. Please email me or message me. You'll find my email on my channel. And let me know if you were the person that sent me this gorgeous yarn. Because I'd really like to thank you. Because I definitely did not buy this yarn. It's been sent to me. So what a lovely surprise to come home to. Then, and I've taken it, opened the top and taken it out. My mean mother's, which I did order before I left, has arrived. All wrapped up. Now, something's missing. Okay, so I realised the Red Heart Ombre, the Red Heart Ombre I ordered to finish my son's blanket, and that's why the parcel is small, is on back order in the colour hickory. Bit disappointed, but weather is getting hotter here we're over 30 celsius today and it probably by the time it arrives on back order it will be um winter by the time i finish it so that's no big deal that was kind of them so um janet lepre sent me some yarn in the dk um, premier yarn which i love premier yarn two of these in the color hummingbird and i wanted to make something that needed four so i bought two more to match the two she sent me i'm not worried about dye lots this is such soft yarn i love premier yarn so there's two of those i ordered remember i'm going to make socks and i didn't think i had enough i'd ordered one more because i thought i'm gonna need one more this is premier serenity and I'm trying to see the colourway. I can't see a colourway on it. Anyway, nicely coloured. And this Karen Simply Soft in this, it looks, there you go, it's the light. It's actually a chocolatey colour, tweed. This is for a special project. This is 97% acrylic three percent viscose visco um in the colorway top it's brown with a fleck in it this is for a special project i only needed one so that's arrived and i actually want to get started on that project today the reason we're in here is it's the australian football's um afl league grand final and the boys are taking over the lounge room and the noise is going to be deafening. It's already started. Not that their teams are in the grand final, but that doesn't matter. Along with, while I've been sick all week, in the background has been the Rugby World Cup in Japan. My youngest son's biggest regret is he didn't go to Japan and book tickets, like book tickets and go. Because I told him to and he went, nah, nah, it'll be fine. Now he's regretting it. Anyway, having boys means lots of sport on television. So, yeah, I'm in here for peace and quiet. So that was my happy mail. Please, if you sent me the scuba ombre, um, I would really like to thank you. It's beautiful yarn. It got me thinking because I watched Llama Mama Kayla's and she's going to do a make-along of a blanket which takes a lot of Red Heart Super Saver, which I have to order through me and mothers. I think the basic 16 skeins that I need, I worked out without freight, was $184 Australian. Not to mention all the bits and pieces to do the other bit, which I don't have because it's really hard to get four weight here. Um, I went shopping yesterday for what I thought was the basic flower loom because I thought maybe if I don't do the blanket because I'd like to try the flower looms that she talked about could not get one anywhere in Cairns I've had to buy it online which is disappointing it's and it's got to come from would you believe it Hong Kong so there you have it that was 
I really like Red Heart Super Saver and the colours I'll need will be in, what do they call it? Just one, just not variegated. And I'd really like to do Llama Ma Michaela's make along of this huge blanket. I think it's a mystery blanket. I think it sounds fun. Um, that's about it. It's long enough. I hope you had a cup of tea and enjoyed it. They were my UK yarn adventures. I did finish most of, I finished all of the ice cream yarn for the yellow and white blanket I took along. Um, I was knitting the green blanket and totally messed it up and couldn't be bothered frogging it while I was on holidays. But I did start a um, shawl that I took along as well in a lightweight um, illusion, thin craft illusion. I'll show you that another time. But thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you like my yarn that I got from all over the world. You never know where I'll go next time to get yarn. And um, I enjoyed looking at it. I hope you did. Stay tuned. There'll be a few photos and videos. Um, for those of you who are curious what's happening to Emma, she's currently in the USA having stem cell treatment. She had her first lot. Um, if you follow me on Facebook, Witch Peace Craft, I have been reposting the photos. She had the most amazing Ferris wheel ride, thanks to Jeannie at Jeannie's Creations. And yeah, maybe I'll do a brief video on catch up on what little Emma's doing in the USA. But yeah, the first stem cell treatment um, knocked her around a bit. And that's why her mum takes her out to have fun before the next lot. Anyway, guys, thanks for being loyal subscribers and sticking with me. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to check out my other videos. You might find something really interesting and enjoy. And click the subscribe button and stay tuned. Um, I've been tossing up around an idea for October because I have all this yarn and I didn't buy most of it with any projects in mind. I just went, <gasps> yarn. I just bought. I know Leanne, my friend, kept saying um, she stopped me buying yarn somewhere. I think it was Helsinki at the market. We found I found this a most amazing package wool yarn for socks, and I was going to buy it. And then she stopped me because she said, "Look at the conversion to make this pair of socks. I would have paid a hundred Australian dollars." I was actually thinking of getting a gift for someone. I thought, no. Nah. They're not worth that much. They're just an acquaintance. So, guys, until next time, take care of each other. Have a crafty day and wait for video 52. Bye for now. So this is the knitwear market, one of them in Estonia. I just bought a top here. This is really nice. This lady was really helpful. They're not that expensive. I'm trying to do a video without people in them. <laughs> Other than the retailers, we just had a bit of a rainstorm, so they're unwrapping everything. It's not as big as I thought it would be. A little disappointed, but hey, that's life. I'll do a bit more on another video. Too many tourists. Here I am in Wade Bridge, and I'm in Sandra's alteration and dress make shop in Wade Bridge, England. And she has the most amazing yarn and knick-knack collection. You cannot believe. I'll just 